Okay guys, so today I thought it would be really fun to show you what I have with me in my professional freelance kit. Um, if you don't know what a freelance kit is, it's basically the bag of makeup that <laughs> makeup artists bring with them to do makeup on clients. It's basically what I use on my clients. I've been wanting to do this video for like two and a half years since I started my channel. You guys ask about it a lot. I don't really know what's held me back other than the fact that I feel kind of embarrassed about my kit because I'm not the most organized person. You guys know this. But today I decided I didn't care. You seem to accept me regardless of my flaws so i'm gonna show you everything i have all my tools that i use stuff to clean my brushes yada 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 and i thought this would just be helpful not only if you are a makeup artist or an aspiring makeup artist but also if you're just a person who likes to wear makeup because if i will use it on brides and bridesmaids then you know basically that it's good and it's possible that it could work for you everything in my kit is very versatile for different skin types and skin tones everything i use has really good staying power and it just i don't know i think it would be valuable information for you guys so if you are into this video please give it a thumbs up it helps me out a lot check the description box down below for every single product that will be linked oh man that's gonna be a lot of work and let's get on with the chlorophyll okay guys here she is oh this is my bag it is a little obnoxious it's not disorganized to me but i think if you just kind of look at this bag you might be like whoa <laughs> however the title of this video is not how to organize your freelance kit because i'm the last person you should ask about that <laughs> i just want to show you what's in it so first things first this bag is from morphe i don't know if they still carry it i got it a while ago but if they do i will link it below or i will find something similar um, i'm not like the most gigantic fan of morphe makeup per se but i do appreciate that they have tools for artists and I also had a brush belt from them that I used for like five years and it was it was very good to me so okay I'm not gonna go in any particular order here I'm just gonna pull stuff out I'm gonna kind of scoot to the side just so I can display products okay this is kind of random but this is right at the surface of my bag are these collab makeup wipes I don't necessarily recommend this brand but you have to have makeup wipes in your bag just for so many reasons if you make a mistake on somebody and you have to fix it your hands get covered in like swatches or wiping off your mixing palette or if somebody sits in your chair and they already have makeup on you gotta have makeup wipes. So whatever brand you like, I really like the MAC ones because they're really big and kind of like stretchy. And usually you can get like a hundred in a pack, which is a little more than some other brands. Now guys, keep in mind, I am a bridal makeup artist. I'm not this cool editorial magazines, not that type of makeup artist. I do weddings. I usually have like five to 10 people that need to be done. I usually have a limited time. I have to use things that work for me as an artist. So if there's something in here that you think I should have that I don't I don't know just keep that in mind or vice versa if I have something and you're like why do you need that just trust me so I have these giant palettes from Adept Cosmetics I've talked about them before maybe like over a year ago I love them so much they get so dirty they're hard to clean this one looks really ratchet right now just because I haven't had a chance to clean it but they're just basically big empty magnetic palettes for any like single eyeshadow pans that you have you can fit bronzers in there highlighters anything that's in a pan that you want to put in here have at it I also have a Z palette it's a little bit smaller these are singles from Coastal Scents these are ColourPop, and these are just two like brightening powders kind of for under the eye. I have really yet to find anything like this that's easy to keep clean. I mean, you swirl your brush in a shadow and powder goes everywhere. But the most important thing that the actual products are sanitized, and I will show you how you can do that in just a minute. Again, that is from Z Palette. In addition to those shadows, I have the original Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. This palette honestly just really worked well for me, and I've gotten to know it really well. I know all the colors. I have a lot of options. I have bright colors. I have a matte black. These two here are really beautiful for bridal makeup. Like it's just, I really think this is a great palette for professional artists. I have these two guys from Sigma and I'm gonna have to check and make sure these are still available. This is a contour palette. This is a blush palette. I've talked about them before so I won't go too in depth but I appreciate that they kind of work well on different skin types. Like there's three highlighters here. One for lighter skin, one for medium skin, one for deeper skin. Um, and then the contour shades are just really beautiful and really buttery. This one kind of has a nice olive undertone. This one's really deep and chocolatey and then this one here is great for fair skin. So I get a lot of use out of this. Same with the blush 
blush palette, you have a really nice blush tone for people who are really fair. Blushes for people who are really deep. I love this one on deep skin tone. It's got a little bit of a glow to it. They're just nice and versatile. This is a slightly newer addition. This is the Blushing in Bali palette from BH Cosmetics. It's yet another blush and highlight palette just to, you know, have more options. And they're just so incredible. Again, I feel like I have three skin tones here, light, medium, and deep. And they're incredibly intense and pigmented. So for brides and bridesmaids who love the glow, this is amazing. This is gorgeous on deep skin. The blushes are <laughs> amazing, very pigmented. So you gotta be careful, but I love this. I kinda wanna buy one just for myself. Man, I wish the back of my hand wasn't so like dry and textured because these really look so much more beautiful on someone's face than they do the back of my hand. I love this. I have a separate little baggie here that has my airbrush machine in it. I use Dynair airbrush makeup. This is what she looks like and uh, I got the little, and I got this little cover so that you can pour cleaner into the cup and it can stay there until, until you wanna use it next and your machine won't get clogged. I cannot tell you the stress of a clogged airbrush machine. So that has been super helpful. And also this, the Temp2 cleaner. Again, I don't use Temp2 for the brand of airbrush that I use, but the cleaner is where it's at. This will unclog your airbrush machine like that. I got this on Amazon. My friend Brandy told me about it, who's also a makeup artist. And it has like been life-changing because I used to spend every single Friday night trying to unclog <laughs> my airbrush machine and it, oh. My most used colors of airbrush foundation will be olive beige, golden tan, cocoa, alabaster, and vanilla, which I can't find in this bag. Vanilla is probably the one I use the most. And you know, you just do a couple drops of this one, a couple drops of this one, mix them accordingly. If you start spraying someone's face and you're like, whoa, that's too dark, just add a little vanilla. If you're like, whoa, it's too light, add a little golden tan, whatever you gotta do. Don't stress out about getting the perfect match. All right, I have a whole row of powders here. All right, next up we have probably my favorite powder of all time. I'm afraid to say that. I love my Lancome powder, but it's so different. This is the Kryolan Anti-Shine Powder. Can't be sure, but I'm pretty Pretty sure this is like clown makeup <laughs> or stage makeup. It's very smoothing, very finely milled. I use the translucent one the most. I don't know if you can see, but there's a lot gone out of this one. And then they came out with light, dark, and then maybe even a medium one. I don't know if I have that one though. The light one looks like it might be too dark, but it's actually really light, but it actually is light. And then the deep one obviously works beautifully on deeper skin tones. They're not really pigmented. It's more of like a translucent powder, but there's just a little tint. I can't say enough about this you have to use it sparingly because if you use too much your face will feel identical to a paper plate i know i've said that a million times but it really really absorbs the moisture in your skin and it's just very smoothing very blurring not cakey i always feel like makeup lasts a thousand times better with this stuff it fills in pores like i don't really use primers on myself or on my clients because i can get rid of pores with this powder so i highly recommend that by the way if you're a professional you can get this brand on namies.com and you can get a discount i think they just need a copy of like your professional license and your driver's license. <gasps> oh man, this looks so dirty. I also have this setting powder from MAC. Um, this one is in soft yellow. There's a really specific skin type that I would use this on that I can't fully describe. My eye just kind of has to see it, but it's like people who are kind of olive, but kind of yellow undertone. I guess that's pretty self-explanatory. But sometimes if they're too olive, this powder looks a little weird. So I don't use this a ton because it's kind of, in my opinion, works best on this one unique like skin tone. <laughs> but it is a great powder and they have other colors in it. Okay, so that's like the interior of the bag. Now we're gonna go around all those little pockets on the outside. I have Q-tips. These are really good for cleaning up like eyeliner mistakes because they're pointy on the end. So these are the IT's Precision Makeup Applicators. I will try to find them or something similar to link for you guys. LA Girl Concealers. Now, every now and then you'll get a client that kind of acts i don't know the word just like they're not a fan of me using inexpensive products on them so if that ever happens i just have to explain how amazing these concealers are how diverse and big the shade range is how they are affordable so i can afford to stock them in my freelance kit just that they're full coverage moisturizing versatile <laughs> amazing concealers and then somewhere in here i also have the orange corrector is it this one? Oh no the peach corrector this one's really amazing for a super dark like blue under eye circles and the orange one. They do have a little brush tip on the end. I don't use that directly on people's faces because you could probably sanitize it, but it's just better safe than sorry. So I squeeze these out onto like a mixing palette. Which I will also show. And I just haven't found anything really better for what I need. I do have the Rimmel concealers in here. 
if somebody is a little bit more oily, um, I will use these. And then same thing, I just take the applicator and swipe it on my mixing palette instead of just like applying this directly to somebody's face. These are also really beautiful. I have some higher end ones too. Like I have the Jouer one that works on certain people, but really I just try to explain to people like not everything has to be expensive with an expensive price tag to be amazing and to work. <laughs> I would say 95% of the people don't care. Don't even ask what I'm using and don't even notice. All right, I have a few bottles of Too Faced Born This Way foundation. I have two foundations here that I kind of switch back and forth between. The main one I'm loving right now is Too Faced Born This Way. I just buy maybe five shades. I really don't see the need to buy a ton of shades. I can usually get away with a really fair one, a really deep one, and then three or four in between and just mix. It has always, always, always worked for me. And I find it less confusing than buying, you know, 30 shades of foundation. And all you know is the name, like this one's called Swan. Like that doesn't tell me a lot of information. So I think pick a foundation that you love, buy five or six shades of it. And over time, you just kind of learn what works and which ones make great mixers for olive people and which ones are great mixers for cool tone people and you know just don't stress out. I also use MAC Studio Fix. Um, and again, this is a great foundation, but I strongly dislike this bottle. I wish it had a pump. When you're in a hurry, it can be a really big hassle to sit there and dump foundation onto a mixing palette and try not to spill too much. Pumps make it so much easier. So right now I'm into the Too Faced one. And what I love about MAC Studio Fix is how easy it is to get to know the shades. Too Faced Born This Way has just words as their shades, like nude, swan, almond, chestnut. Whereas MAC goes by letters and numbers, so this is like NW10, NC30, NW, what is this? 58. It tells you the undertones and like numbers so you know if it's lighter or darker. Keep that in mind. That might help you. Disposable mascara wands, because obviously you can't use mascara straight from the tube on a person, unless they ask you to use their mascara, which is totally fine. These little disposable brushes for lip gloss, I get these at Sally's. Right now, it looks like the only eyelash glue I have in here is the Kiss one that has aloe in it. This is great, but I prefer the Esquito eyelash glue for clients just because I know it won't come off. This is actually just in here as a backup. <laughs> Before I do my next wedding, I'm probably gonna have to grab the Esquito lash glue. <laughs> Several pairs of tweezers because they help me apply false lashes. I have the Sigma Wicked Gel Liner. Um, I prefer the Pretty Vulgar one, but this one also works. It's just a little, it's a little more solid and a little tiny bit less fluid than the Pretty Vulgar one. So I definitely like have to thin this out with a medium or something to get a nice smooth line and not drag people's eyelids. Mac Blanc Type. <laughs> This is such a great shade, it's such a classic, just matte, really bright, creamy color, and it's so beautiful for people who don't want shimmer. A lot of times, mothers of the bride and grandmothers of the bride, they don't want shimmer on their eyelids, um, so if you wanna brighten them up, MAC Blanc type is always like my go-to. Anastasia Brow Pomades, I probably have like six of these in here. I like brow pomades because you can mix them as opposed to, and create custom shades, as opposed to just being stuck with a pencil that just is the color that it is. <laughs> I would say my most common combination of these would be blonde and auburn. I mix those two shades a lot for people with that kind of warm, not really dark, not really blonde hair color. It's such a common hair color. And auburn, of course, is a little bit too red and blonde can be a little too green on some people. So I love mixing these two. I have ebony, I have taupe. Um, and of course they're nice and creamy, easy to make straight lines, easy to make hair strokes and they stay on the face. I have a big thing of Cetaphil in here for someone who maybe forgot their moisturizer. Um, I just apply this with like a foundation brush or your client can even pump it into her hand and apply it herself. It's definitely a little bit heavy, so I, I don't really use this on people who are super oily, but it makes such a difference on people who are dry. And anybody who's worried about their makeup looking cakey, like especially under the eyes, it's unscented, it's hypoallergenic, it's non-comedogenic, comedo, komodo, komodo. <laughs> non-comedogenic. <laughs> There's vitamin E. It's a very nice, versatile, affordable moisturizer. And then I also have Ole Henriksen eye cream somewhere. Oh gosh, did I leave it at a bride's house? I have the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Mascara. I don't necessarily recommend this one though because it's really hard to fit disposable wands in here. This wand is so tiny. And sometimes I'll try and like squeeze the big fat disposable wands in there and they like don't work. You just need a good mascara that's not going to transfer under the eye and not gonna flake like in Little Crispies. I have a little pair of shears here, which is random, but they really come in handy. Like sometimes I have to cut 
the band of an eyelash if someone has a smaller eye or you know a long like eyebrow hair you never know if you're gonna need scissors a uh, gerard cosmetics setting spray this is I, probably my favorite setting spray. It's kind of hard to say because I feel like I love a lot of setting sprays, but this really does so much for the makeup. It makes it look so skin-like. Only problem with these are that they are heavily scented. So I'll kind of just check with the client first. Say, do you mind products that are strongly scented? And then I also love with my whole heart, the Morphe setting spray. This is, this is like top three best setting sprays I've ever used. And I love that it is an aerosol. Just finely mist over the whole face. Beautiful, affordable. Oh, I wanna spray it right now, but my birdie's in here. All right, next two things are super important. Brush cleaner. Right now I'm using this one from It Cosmetics. It's called brush bath. Like my Cinema Secrets one that I've talked to you guys about before, it is instant. So your brush is instantly dry and like ready to be used again. However, it does not work as well. The Cinema Secrets one, you dip your brush, you swirl it on a towel and it is sparkling crystal clear clean and dry. This one, it's like, there's kind of some leftover brown on there. And this is actually a brand new bottle of my Beauty So Clean Cosmetic Sanitizer Mist. It comes with a spray thingy, but I haven't put it on there yet because this is a new bottle. You can spray this directly onto makeup. So onto cream compacts, onto eyeshadow palettes, like directly onto the eyeshadow. I've never had an issue with it changing the formula, drying it out or anything, and it kills bacteria. And it says right here on the bottle that it effectively cleans, rejuvenates, and removes bacteria from pressed powder, eyeshadow, cream foundations, etc. I don't have them in my kit anymore, but I used to use the Graftobian cream foundation palettes. Wait, where are those? And I never like double dipped or anything, but it just made me feel better to spray this just in case. You never know. You don't want to risk giving someone some sort of facial infection. There's no parabens. It's non-irritating. I highly recommend this if you are a profesh. Next up we have lip products. I am on the hunt for a way to keep my lip products more organized. However, I have a feeling whatever I would use would just get disorganized again because it's who I am as a person. Lip liners. Um, my favorite ones are probably MAC, Gerard Cosmetics, and Palladio, which is from Sally's. Super inexpensive. NYX. What is it? What color is this? Natural. MAC Edge to Edge. Um, MAC Spice. MAC Subculture. MAC Cherry, Palladio Nearly Nude. I've talked about that a thousand times. Gerard Cosmetic, Ecstasy, Sugar and Spice, Nude. I love those colors. I have a lot of the liquid lipsticks from Anastasia. I buy several of them every year. This one, Crush, is one I use a lot. And again, you can just put it on your little mixing palette and use like a disposable brush to apply it. Oh my gosh, the matte liquid lipsticks from City Beauty. These are so amazing. They really smooth out the lines in people's lips. So I always use City Beauty products for people who complain that they feel like their lips are too thin or like wrinkly or they're not super confident about how their lips look. These things are like amazing. Also the glosses from City Beauty. Ooh, these are expensive, but they're just so long wearing and they're so incredible. Here's another one I use a lot from Anastasia. Um, it's called Milkshake. It just makes everything a little bit more nude. Really with pretty much everybody, I will use a liquid lipstick and then put something on top of it, whether it be a gloss or like an actual lipstick. Just because I think liquid lipsticks on their own can just be a little bit drying. Ooh, MAC Fix Plus. Duh, I forgot that was in here. I go through these like crazy during wedding season. I always have like three or four bottles because not only is it amazing for people with dry skin just as all over their face to like prep the face you know you can dip your brush in like a shimmer eyeshadow spray some fix plus and it applies so much more intensely and dramatically and metallically fix plus is oh my gosh such a staple what else do i have here a sharpener for lip liners and eyeliners i have my koki pencils this one bronze is really beautiful for redheads it's beautiful for most people but i love it on redheads you know just if you're using a pencil on somebody whether it be a lip pencil or eye pencil sharpen it scrape off everything you used on that person and then sanitize it i have some good old like equate round cosmetic sponges you can kind of go over somebody's face with a sponge to make sure there's no brush streaks or you can kind Kind of like fold it over your finger like a taco like this and you know blend out concealer oh 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 anastasia clear brow gel again um just use a disposable wand so that you're not like re-dipping and using it on people it's a great brow gel i've used it for a long time but as soon as i'm out of this one i'm going to switch to the benefit one the 24-hour brow setter um just because it's a little better i really care a lot about everybody's eyebrows staying in place on their wedding day i have my brush belt that i got from amazon and 80 percent of my brushes are missing <laughs> This is another one of those things that I find incredibly difficult to like 
keep from looking ratchet. The most important thing is that it is clean and not that it looks clean. I've never had a bad review. I've never had a single comment about anything looking, but if you are a person that that really bothers, like let me know if you have found a solution because makeup stains. And I, I, and I can't like buy a new brush belt or a new Z palette every single time. So that is pretty much everything in my kit. Um, things change from time to time. If you've ever heard me talk about a product and I said I put it in my freelance kit and you didn't see it today, um, it doesn't mean it's not a good product. It just means maybe I ran out and didn't repurchase it or something. I'm always open to suggestions. If you're a makeup artist, if there's something that you think I really need, let me know. These brands have really worked well for me over 10 years of like trial and error. <laughs> and I'm kind of the type of person to like stick with what I know, at least when it comes to clients. I experiment on myself all the time, but I'm always kind of afraid to do that with my clients because I just don't want anything to go wrong. If you are a makeup artist, always remember that as long as everything's sanitized and good quality, it doesn't matter what it costs or maybe how the packaging looks. You know, try not to stress out if you're new to this and you want to start building your freelance kit, but you don't have a ton of money to splurge on like 100% high-end products. I personally think it's completely okay to have a mixture of affordable and, you know, pricier stuff. And then I just have one little tip for you if you're still here, and this is if you are a makeup artist or if you're searching for a makeup artist, there's a website called thenot.com. It's a place where people who are getting married look to hire different vendors like photographers, cake people, makeup artists, hairstylists, videographers. So if you're a wedding vendor, if you're a bridal makeup artist, you can advertise yourself on there. You pay a monthly fee. And I am not kidding you, from like 2012 to 2016, I got 90% of my business from the knot. It was amazing. I got so much business that I had to turn people down. I stopped using it just because I started to no longer need it. I was getting so many brides just from word of mouth. But if you are starting out, please put yourself on the knot, it will pay for itself because of the amount of jobs that are booked. Last I checked, my profile on the knot was still on there, even though it's really old. You can read all my reviews if you want from brides I've worked with over the years. And you'll notice that not one person ever said anything about the fact that I used $5 concealer. Like <laughs> people want you to do a good professional clean job. I don't know why I'm talking about this so much, but I'm trying to think of things that stressed me out when I was starting that you know, might stress you out too. Uh, let me know any questions that you have down below. And also if you want, check out my The Truth About Being a Makeup Artist video that I made like a year ago. There's also some viable information in that video if you wanna be a makeup artist that doesn't really have any, anything to do with what I use. It just talks about the job itself and what it's like. So as always, thanks so, so much for watching you guys. Even if this video didn't interest you at all and you just watched it anyway, I love you. See you guys in the next video. Bye. Kai be done. How many of you said that sentence as a kid every single day of your life? Kai be done. Shalom. Okay. No, I did not. Gerard Cosmetic New, Gerard Cosmetics S to X, Gerard.